Now, regular viewers will know that recently I brewed my first batch of my own beer, Binde IPA. Although it was by no means perfect, the reviews were pretty good. If that is your version, I'll be so happy because it's like when you. It smells incredible. It smells incredible. Lloyd, that's this one. No way! That is the Shut Binde up. IPA. <laughs> it's amazing. It's much better than that. That's Try it. nice. It's nice. That's really nice. I know. It's not quite as meant to be. It's a bit that overly fizzy. Production. There were some slight problems with it though, and by slight problems I mean it had a tendency to explode. I'm going to sample a Binde IPA. Oh my god! <laughs> so. <laughs> So, you, Travis, you open a lot of beers. Is this normal? <laughs> no. <laughs> it looks very good, though. It looks that like it's excited to be drunk. <laughs> that didn't seem to deter you viewers, though. I've been inundated since then with messages of, can I have a bottle? Are you going to sell it? What's next for Binday IPA? So I'm going to carry on learning on my brewing journey and today we're going to make a new batch of beer that hopefully won't explode. This time round we've ramped up production because beer people tend to be absolutely awesome people. I've been offered loads of free equipment or help or assistance from various people and a guy Simon who runs loads of home brewing stuff, more on him later, kindly gave me loads of home brew stuff. This lovely boiler, oh it's hot, and a mash tun and a few other little bits and bobs that we're going to be using today. Now that we're brewing on a bigger scale though, I'm going to need a bit more help. So I asked a couple of friends, Mike and James, who you may remember from my trip to Whistler last year, to come along, give us a hand and just help brew in exchange for a few beers. Here they are now. Okay, so a couple of weeks have passed and we've got our beer. It's fermented, it's been bubbling away uh, in the airlock. Mike's back to help bottle things. Are you excited? Oh, I'm so excited. Right, um, sorry, the dishwashers make a lot of noise as well, but don't worry about that. We're gonna have a, open it up and have a look at it. And at this point, everything that touches the beer has got to be sanitized or it's all gonna go wrong. And you don't want to disturb the beer. So, shh, beer, relax, beer. I'm gonna take out the airlock first. Smell, mate, that smells incredible. Can you smell that? Oh, it really does. It smells really hoppy and citrusy. Okay, so that's 1.012. We started with an original gravity of 1.054. You take the difference, uh, the, the, how much it's changed whilst fermenting. You then do a little, couple of little sums. And Michael Miller will now reveal the beer ABV is... 5.5%. 5.5% beer. After Binday IPA 2 had conditioned in the bottle for a couple of weeks, I needed an expert opinion. So I headed to Doc's Beers, Grimsby's greatest export since fish, to ask Shaz the co-owner and Lewis the brewer whether my beer was good or rank. Okay, so here we are in Grimsby at Doc's Beers. We've had uh, some amateur beer enthusiasts taste the beer. We wanted to come here to get an expert or two experts' opinions here. <laughs> this is uh, Shaz who runs 
the brewery yep. is that with with others. I don't yep. want to give you full, full <laughs> credit. Lewis, who is, who is by trade a brewer. Where have you worked, Lewis? In the uh, past? So I used to brew at Brew Dogs, where I learned to brew. Then went to Magic Rock in Huddersfield, and then a uh, small brewery in Manchester. Then back home to Grimsby. Did you do home brewing? Did. Yeah, yeah. Started off home brewing. Uh, made some some good ones. Made some terrible ones. So okay. well, we'll see how this, this this fits in. So basically, there's there's two two things to taste. Um, this is uh, the original Bin Day IPA. This is the final bottle of it. You can see that there. Um, th I don't know what's happened to the label. I don't know if that's come from within the bottle <laughs> and somehow it's permeated. <laughs> that is the original Binday IPA. So I suggest maybe if we start with that yeah. and nice. then we, get, we can move on to the new new version. This does, it's a bit explodey. I don't know if that's a technical beer term. I think it is, yeah. There we go, right, let's try it. Bad. I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Yeah. Seen a lot I've worse. seen worse from professional breweries as well. I've really. seen worse from this brewery. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. If we just don't know how my pouring technique is. There. No, it's good, man. Is that all right? Yeah, man. So this is the original um, Binday IPA. Um, when was this brewed? How long ago? I'm trying to think now. Slightly longer than probably would be ideal. It's probably not as fresh <laughs> nah. as it once was. Okay, um, I'm going to say maybe July. Maybe we'll, all, so we'll give this a go and um, and let me know your thoughts. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, firstly, I mean, appearance, lovely and clear. What percent is this? Yeah, I don't know. Some. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've since invested in a hydrometer, no, nice. but early on, I didn't, don't know. So a mystery. Yeah. Um, it's it, the kit was, and then it's nothing like it, but the kit was a um, Brewdog Elvis juice. Uh, nice. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not. So there is a bit of grapefruit in it, but I don't yeah, know yeah, you can definitely get that man. That tartness from it. It's nicely carbonated from the obviously secondary fermentation yeah. in the bottle. So and say so it's the issue with bottle condition though is yours is crystal. Um, yeah, see there's side side. There, yeah. Right, yeah. because yours was poured later yeah, from the bottle. Okay. Well, I mean, still that, it's a good looking beer, right? Like, yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah. Still <laughs> yeah. Still yeah. A, a little explodey. Yeah, a little Brill bit Brilliant on the nose, lots of grapefruit. Yeah, it's great for the hops still are coming through, even though it's brewed in like July or so. It's uh, It's yes. got, for me, a little bit of uh, what I call like the homebrew twang, mm -hmm. which I think is, uh, for me, it's like just untreated water, you get it. A lot. Okay. I used to get a lot with water in Nottingham when I used to homebrew there. Yeah. Uh, but it's like this is a lot. It's a lot less prevalent in this than in most homebrew I have made with Nottingham water. So, so what sort of things should I be doing to my water to so stop that? Is it is it pH stuff or is uh, it? It can be pH. Minerals? It can be minerals. So uh, have a look into getting like say a water report from the local water authority. Yeah. They might have one online. I've got one. Don't nice. Me. Excellent. Yeah, really Excellent. Really Excellent. Really 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 I got it. Nailed it. Definitely my job. Let's talk. Um, yeah, so then just look into like style specific mineral additions, so calcium sulfite, uh, calcium chloride, stuff like that. And how do you know what, what you're, is what it you're finding out for? what sort of, yeah, how do you know it's, what you're It for? can either be long drawn out mathematical equations or there's plenty of calculators online. Calculators. I think what you said, is it style specific? There isn't yeah. like the perfect one, no. one size fits all water so it's not you make, you make this is the correct water. For beer, yeah. 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 yeah, like say a dark beer, like a dark multi beer is going to want something completely different to like a That's the nice beer thing like about this. brewing. Everything, yeah. Everything's sort of uh, open to interpretation and Fantastic. being able to do whatever you want to do with it. I think um, I might have made mistakes towards the end in terms of oxygenation yeah. sort of thing. No, it, doesn't, a it doesn't come across it, as oxidized. It doesn't, it doesn't come across as oxidized to me, no. Okay. Right, if it, so one of the quick ways you can see if a beer is oxidized, if it used to be, say, this beautiful colour that it is now, if it'd start going a bit darker, like brown, yeah. that'd be when you should really worry about that. Okay. Um, but no, that's still looking really good, man. Wonderful. So we're going go to go the, to the next bin day IPA iteration. I just wanted to try and do something different on this one. So this is much more sort of bitter. Nice. Yeah. Just a recipe I found online. and. Inside. Um, Bill uh, brewed in much Gym's larger, yeah, yeah. Uh, in much larger quantities. Nice, so, um, always good. But like, that's 17 liters. I think we got this one. Yeah, um, 17. Uh, I think 17. One nice. second. Yeah, nice. I think nice. um, it's. I think I've undercarbonated this, as you can possibly <laughs> see from this. In that, um, I didn't. I measured out my sugar. Yeah, but I didn't mix it up properly before yeah. I put it in, so just dumped it in. You're gonna get some bottles that are super So calcium, some are gonna be mental yeah. and some aren't. So um, we've got other bottles over there if you wanna try and gamble and see if not, but do you wanna give this a go yeah, and see absolutely. how this is? I mean, straight away, it doesn't look fizzy, yeah, I mean, does it's, it? It's darker in appearance, there's a lot less carbonation, um, very little head on it. 
Um, There's another really the nice. timeline difference between. This is fresh, so this was only this bottled fresh. on a week. Uh, okay, fair. Monday, so week, with yeah. homebrew, obviously, you're going to get secondary fermentation in, yeah. in the bottle. So, so oh, no, sorry, sorry, no, it's been bottled three weeks. Sorry. Three right. weeks. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we, we should have seen some. Um, yeah. So, how did this differ from the original Binde IPA? A completely oh, different well. recipe nice. altogether, just to try something different. Um, it was based on a recipe. Too hearted. Nice. Maybe I was going to say this is right on my my yeah, really spicy. Too hearted. Yeah. Yeah. Really spicy on the nose, isn't it? Yeah. It's. Uh, it like reminds herbal. me of like how IPAs were when I got into beer like yeah. ten years ago. Like, which is still how I prefer. Right. Uh, okay. It's so a bit more bitter, a bit clear. It's got a nice caramel malt body to it as well. Yeah. It's it tastes really like well um, an imported American. Yeah. IPA, doesn't absolutely. Like, like too, yeah. Or... Bell's too hearted is yeah. uh, the kind of archetype of that style. So. <laughs> No, that's uh, I really like that man. That's and that homebrew twang is nowhere near as strong in this it was in this. The, to be honest, mine could have been more with the yeast as well uh, than say the clearer one. So okay. I'm gonna give yours a sniff, Shaz. Yeah, go for it. No, it's still there in that one. Okay. Uh, but this is a lot cleaner as well. It's a really clean fermentation. Why would that have been so? So would because I mean I've just used the same sort of mm. tap water. Could it be that it's different tap water each time, or just that it suits that style? It could more? be that it suits the style. It could be a cleaner, kind of happier yeast strain throughout the fermentation as well. There's a few different things it could be. And also, I'd say this is a punchier flavour itself. So even if there is issues and off flavours, you can cover that up with the amount of hops that are in this. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is. This is really nice. There's a really this. nice hop character coming through yeah. in this. Well, are these both IPAs? Yeah. Is, yeah, I'd say I'd put this down more as kind of a higher strength pale ale. Okay. Because it's a little bit kind of lighter, easier drinking, and obviously without knowing the ABV as well. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely an IPA. Yeah. Okay. Like this is, I put this down as like what they call like an old school West Coast IPA, yeah. which is what I prefer rather than them big, juicy, hazy ones that people are liking now. But this is right on my street. Wonderful. So, okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, so we have a West Coast IPA in our range, which is Never Say Die, which is this one here. Yep. Um, and again, it's, it's more of a traditional style of IPA. So um, with the next brew on the schedule, actually, is sort of like a more modern, juicy boy type, uh, hazy IPA. Yeah. But we just, we're going to keep that in the core range because yeah. we just absolutely love that sort of like crystal clear and just, just all those sort of tones that come from those traditional West Coasts. So that's, that's going to be around for a while, but that's, that's the closest I'd say yeah. in our range. Oh, definitely, yeah. Sense, yeah. Brilliant. So, <laughs> so overall, how am, I, how am I getting on with, with the homebrewing? Uh, better than I ever got on with homebrewing, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, no, they're, cool. like, as far as homebrews go, they're really good. I've had, like, way, way worse homebrews. I've had some worse professional brews. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So, smashing it. So I'd, the I'd happily sit in session that. Yeah, if, you, if okay. I bought that in a bar, I won't complain. Well, I've got a few bottles here I'll leave with you, and you can, you can, you can, um, you can enjoy them at your leisure. Nice, man. Um, the next stage then, because these are both recipes that I've found online, yeah. is to try and make my own recipe. Nice. What tips can you give for that? Is it, I mean, how would you go about uh, that? Recipe creation is like my favourite bit of the job, uh, because it gives you that chance to be creative, and especially in a homebrew setting. Like, honestly, I'd just go wild. Think about things you like, and just try and do it. So if you read a description of a hop and you like the flavour, or you know you've had a beer with a hop and you like it, get that in there. Uh, and then just play around with malts as well. Don't just be inclined to stick with like base pale ale malt for everything. Throw some Vienna in there, throw some Munich. They're really interesting biscuity kind of characters. Um, yeah, pr mess around with water profiles. There's no right and wrong. So just look at what you can do. Different yeast strains as well. And is it a case of finding something that you like and then refining is that how you would go about yeah. it? Did you get something that you go, this is I, good? I think it depends really. So um, from a home brewer's perspective, or scaling up to a to commercial brewery like ourselves, if you're looking for sort of like a, an ever-changing, totally different guest beer, then like Lewis says, just go with what you fancy, what you're good to is. You might go from being a Saison to a Sour to a Pale Ale to an IPA. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be totally different every time. Whereas if for us, if we're trying to develop a core range or if you're trying to develop a, a beer brand that, yeah. that you're going to develop out, when, when we're developing beers in that sense, just like any sort of science um, experiment, you try and keep your variables to a minimum. So every time we do a brew, we'll only change like one or two things so we can track how that's changed the beer. So right. everything else remains the same, but it might be a tweak on the water profile. And then when we feel we've got that water profile right, the next brew is we start tweaking hop 
uh, hops or like whirlpool additions yeah, yeah. or and is there a particular order like you that. do that would you always start with the water and then go from there or is it no i think it depends on what you're it, thinking about the beer doesn't it, it based on the tasting yeah yeah so um, it's the most important bit of the job and how do you get good at tasting beer is it just drinking, drinking a lot of beer yeah, drinking. Uh, in, the, in the most yeah. basic sense drinking a lot there is uh you can do qualifications and the like in it um you can do long courses in tasting like off flavors and stuff you've like done that. quite a few haven't you yeah so, uh, so like a, a week course where you just sat at a table just sniffing beer uh, which sounds great but it's quite it gets quite dull towards the end right um, but yeah there's stuff like that or just drinking and just trying to be a bit more critical of what you're drinking yeah so there's no right or wrong everyone tastes differently so if I say it tastes like X and you say it tastes like Y neither of us are right or wrong uh, it's just yeah just taste and see what you like and just be more critical about what you're tasting I think one of the things that's happened for us as a company almost by accident um, what what you can't see on the camera right now is that we're looking into our taproom space yeah um, and I think one thing we'd undervalued or, or hadn't realized would happen is that's essentially turned into our full-time tasting room yeah so right. we regularly and what I love to see is these groups of people coming in and they'll buy loads of different one thirds pre-covid obviously and they'd be yeah. swapping them around and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. try that try that try that and you just you just see a conversation starting around beer and I think that's what craft beers are about for me. For years, things like wine, it would be a normal experience to go for a wine tasting. Yeah. But beer tasting, for some reason, um, I don't think ever had that same yeah. backing. But in recent, sort of like, yeah. probably in the last decade, um, it, it's starting to... to it's weird it how it's changed, how quickly it's changed, yeah. though, isn't it? Because I remember, I'm 43, but I remember beer being beer. Not, not amazing. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, it's just beer's beer. Not, not great. Yeah. But then you'd go to somewhere like Germany yeah. and on the holiday and you go, yeah, why doesn't any of our yeah. beer have like, flavour like this? Yeah. Like, so it's, it's, yeah, it's exciting. Well, thank you so much for, for this and for saying nice things as well. Um, there wasn't, wasn't set up for that. Um, uh, I was fully ready to come in and say that I didn't like it, to be honest. Good. No, 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 good, good. You do, I was that 20 quid, though. Yeah, 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 it's absolutely, it's absolutely fine. But absolute bargain, it was taking out the ad revenue. Um, wonderful. Um, Doc's Beer's beer is excellent. I can, I can um, recommend it thoroughly. It had a... a extended tasting <laughs> session last night so um that went uh, very well um for people new to doctor what would you recommend in terms of entry ales or is it just what you like what do you reckon so I, I reckon try like the core range is always a good entry like hard graft is a really interesting one that people usually gravitate towards we have a hard so core it is, yeah. we have a hardcore following uh, of hard graft uh, it's hopped with Sriracha Ace, which is uh, a very divisive hop in the beer scene. It's the Marmite of hops. It, it is, absolutely. Uh, I didn't like it for a long time. Uh, now I can't get enough hard graft. It's my go-to drink. Uh, right. After work, obviously not, not during. <laughs> no, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> very, very, very important. Well, thank you. Um, the, the, the guys at Dr. Beers very kindly offered you um, people 10% um, off of, um, of Dr. Beers. So you can go to the website, I'll put a link down below, and I believe the code is Robbie10. Yeah, I'm getting a nod over there. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, nice. thank you so much, guys. Um, I will get back. I'll get recipe creating, and hopefully, I'll come back another time with. Look forward to it. Recipes. We'll get it brewed on the big kit. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't explode then. <laughs> Since embarking on my beer adventure, I've noticed one thing, and that's that beer people are really, really lovely. So many people already have been really kind, like Doc's beers, let me go up and hang around with them and learn about what they're doing and taste my beer and stuff. James Goulding from The Dance has been lovely with offering advice and stuff. And Simon, a guy I've never met before, has been online, giving me loads of tips and gave me all that brewing equipment that we saw uh, earlier on. He's actually um, starting up his own bottle shop, which is a fancy new word for a, an off license. And it's better than wine rack, is uh, what uh, I believe the word of the street is. Down in Falmouth, if you live down there and you wants to do something nice for someone, I'll put the details of his crowdfunder down, down below because nice people sort of deserve nice things back. Anyway, um, I'm going to carry on my brewing adventure. Don't forget you can get your Doc's beers cheap if you want. Uh, and hopefully by next year, Binday IPA will be available for the public. <laughs>